Ken here with you again. Uh, this is lesson five and part five. So we've put resistors in parallel with each other. So we've put resistors and inductors in parallel with each other. Then we put resistors and capacitors in parallel with each other. And now the final step, we're putting resistors, inductors and capacitors all in parallel with each other. So we have each of the three possibilities now. So in a parallel circuit with R, L and C, the resistive branch current is in phase with the applied voltage. Nice and easy, straightforward. Resistive branch current is in phase with the applied voltage. The current in the inductive branch lags the applied voltage by 90 degrees and the current in the capacitive branch leads the applied voltage by 90 degrees. I'll say that again. The current in the inductive branch lags the applied voltage by 90. The current in the capacitive branch leads the applied voltage by 90. And of course, if you compared the current in the inductive and capacitive branches with each other, they would be 180 degrees from each other. So we're going to jump into a quick example with that little bit of information that I've given you that resistors are in phase, inductors are 90 degrees lag, capacitors are 90 degrees lead. See if you can work out the values around this circuit. So pause the video. We've got 400 volts, 50 hertz, 200 ohms, um, 0.6 of a Henry for the inductor, 10 microfarads for the capacitor. See if you can work out what the branch, all the branch currents are and how they might relate to each other on a phase of the diagram. Remember, in this particular case, it's a pure resistor, a pure inductor and a pure capacitor. So everything's nicely either in phase or at 90 degrees out. And see if you can work out the values around this particular circuit. So pause the video. And then when you come back, we'll do a comparison. Okay, I'm hoping you're, you're back now. And we're going to do um, the work, well, work through this example. So the current through the resistor was pretty easy. Voltage divided by resistance. So uh, we have uh, 400 volts divided by 200 ohms. I uh, shouldn't even need a calculator, uh, two amps, and the phase angle is zero, or they are in phase. The second one, we should have worked out what the XL is for the inductor, and taken the applied voltage divided by the XL, and you should have got 2.1 amps, and that's lagging by 90 degrees. Or if you just put minus 90, I would be happy with that. Then thirdly, the voltage through the capacitor, voltage again divided by the XC this time, you would have had to work that out with 1 on 2 pi FC, would have given you 1.26 amps. But I total, we're going to need to do a phasor diagram to find I total. So here's our phasor diagram. And you can see here's our two amps, the pink phaser. Two amps on the horizontal in phase with the voltage. And uh, major divisions are worth one amp. So one amp, two amps, and closed arrowheads, of course, for these. Our IC leads by 90 degrees. So we've scaled up here 1.26 of an amp. And it's at 90 degrees. And then finally, our current for our inductor in the opposite direction at 90 degrees. Over here on this diagram, because the IC and the IL are 180 degrees from each other, we can simply um, do a phasor addition, which is kind of just a subtraction. And we end up with the result in here. So I'll just uh, draw on the diagram to show you what I mean. So 
So effectively, we've just top to tailed. We've taken this phaser and we've top to tailed it to here. So that's all we've done. We've taken that and we've top to tailed it to there and here's the result. So I'll just draw the result is what we've got left there. So we can either top to tail, we can parallelogram, whatever we would like to do. We need to find this point here, which we do by paralleling or by top to tailing. We project backwards to the origin, here's our origin, and the length of the phaser across the triangle is our I total, which in this case comes to 2.18 amps and we can calculate the phase angle which comes out at 23.45 so that resultant current we get in here is simply IL minus IC to give us this difference or we just top to tail the phase from the phase of the diagram it does the subtraction for us so in this particular diagram, we can work out that the I total is 2.18. We've got an angle of 23.45 degrees lagging. And the total Z for the circuit, Z is equal to the voltage divided by the current. So 400 divided by 2.18 gives us a Z total of 183.49 amps. Now to change things up a little. What if L has some internal resistance. So L is no longer a pure L, but a practical L, and it's got an internal resistance of 50 ohms. So what are we going to do? We can calculate out what the angle is here. And again, This is effectively caused by our 50 ohms in here. And that's our XL. And this creates our ZL. So we can now work out that that actually gives us 2.05 amps, but it's at 75 degrees. We now move that whole phaser this direction, and that's what we've done over here. We've simply taken the IL from here. We've moved it over and we've put it in here. So I'll just draw a red line on top of the green one just so it's obvious. So that's our IL at 2.5 at our 7.5. The next thing we do is we take this current and we project it up at 90 degrees. So this current is that one there, projected up at 90 degrees. So we've effectively done our phaser addition of the, or our phaser subtraction of the IL and the IC, allowing for all the angles, and we've ended up at that point there. We then project backwards and 
to the origin, the length of the line to that point is the I total, and we scale that off at 2.63 amps. We do some trigonometry and we will find the angle was 15.94. And we can then use that to find the overall impedance of the circuit. So we tip to tail the phaser diagram with the inductor for the previous circuit with an internal resistance. So effectively, that internal resistance caused that. So the 50 ohms. Try to write an N internal caused that little bit of phase shift off the horizontal, pushing us out to that point to get then get our total current.